has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible, hanging out the bad, see the burger, eat the bad, I'm over the bad, I'm just gonna interrupt with the bad, out of bad, take bad, lie, bad, do bad, bread, bad, attention, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Brella Palatial, right across the river through the woods from where Granny loves to sit on the back deck and bust off a chip or two of the Agent Orange Hybrid in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, to break the driving, some kind of fashion, shake it up, should do but all my fun and come rough out to fly a party up, rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, but the best is time to tatter my brain splattered all over Manhattan. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Carver. Hi, this afternoon. Mafia is running it with Hayden Fried, LTN in Kansas City Mo, a birthday roll call on a misery Monday. Trey Young, your boy Ice Trey, 24 today. Brandon Clark, 26. DeJounte Murray, 26. Mo Alley Cox, 29. CJ McCollum, 31. Stefan Gilmore, 32. George Springer, 33. Tyreek Evans, 33. Kenny Britt, 34. Ryan Suckup, 36. Gio Gonzalez, 37. Philip Buchanan, 42. Raja Bell, 46. Jim Abbott, double nickels. Bob Papa, Giants announcer, 58. Randy Meyer, 60. Ken Rosenthal, 60. Dan Hampton, legend, Bears, 65 today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <clears throat> the Dolphins beat the Ravens inexplicably, 42 to 38. 28 to 7. They were up at halftime. You talk about laying down like a French hooker. I mean, I couldn't even believe my eyes. I don't know what was worse. That or the Browns up 30 to 17 with two minutes left, and they lost. Can you tell I bet on the uh, Browns and the Ravens? And we got it all for you. Flacco to Wilson to win it. Clowney's going to miss the game against the Steelers Thursday night in Cleveland with an ankle. Cards beat the Raiders 29-23 in overtime. They were down huge. Their biggest comeback since 99. Kyler Murray going off. Cards win it in overtime on a fumble. Pick, scoop, and score. Unbelievable. Hunter Renfro, they're checking him for a concussion after that final play. He got lit up. Niners beat the Seahawks by 20. Trey Lance, broken ankle surgery, done for the year. Hello, Jimmy G, and hello, all those incentives. He's going to get all his money now, isn't he? Jimmy G got it done. He talks about it. Plus, Adam Kaplan this hour. He's coming on early today to talk about the Eagles and Viking game tonight in Philadelphia because he's going to the game. He wants to get this over with so he can go root for the Eagles like he does every week. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be here all as a week. Uh, the Cowboys beat the Bengals. They were kicking the Bengals' ass the whole game. And then the Bengals came back and tied it. Cowboys get it done. Cooper Rush, 235 yards in a TD. Jerry Jones talking about it today. Trayvon Diggs holds Jamar Chase to two catches and 14 yards. That is shut down corner. Bucks beat the Saints 20 to 10. Mike Evans and Lattimore have a huge brawl. Evans suspended a game. Tom Brady didn't rally uh, the team anyway around the brawl. Uh, Tom Brady uh, will get a veterans rest day every Wednesday through the regular season. He just doesn't have to work on Wednesdays. What a deal. Giants beat the Panthers in East Rutherford, 1916. Danny Dimes talking about it. Uh, how about a bomb to Bellinger, a TD? Pats beat the Steelers, 17-14 in Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin won't pull all uh the quarterbacks and, and start messing with that at all he's leaving trubisky in for thursday night in cleveland he's not going to start picking even though they're booing already and yelling for his name that took five minutes we welcome all of our radio affiliates sirius xm channel 159 of course mightier 1090 espn radio in san diego near to you wanna do you wanna sports map sports byline good to have you with us jags beat the colts 24 20 man do the colts suck Trevor Lawrence hooking up with Christian Kirk for a second touchdown of the game. We got it for you. Rams beat the Falcons 31-27. Here's another game I was living at. 28-3, was that what it was? 
They let them 28 to three. They beat them 31, 27. Can you tell I had the Rams minus 10? They were up 28 to three. They were up 30 to 10. They lost. It was 31, 10 and they lost uh, the, the cover. I mean, honest to Christ. They won the game. I don't care about winning the game. I care about the cover. That's all I care about. We got Sean McVay on the show. Lions won. Broncos won. They're already a booing Hackett. They want him fired in Denver. He's been there for two games. And they won. And they're still booing him. Packers beat the Bears easily. We got Aaron Rodgers, Darren Jones for a touchdown. You name it. We got day ball today. Seattle and the Angels getting set to go. I think top of the hour, next hour. Uh, the Monday night doubleheader should be interesting. Josh Allen will talk about the game with the Titans in Buffalo. Kevin O'Connell talking about playing uh, in Philly with the Vikes. Sirianni loves the spotlight of being on Monday night. We'll talk about all of the college football. Oklahoma hammers Nebraska. Indiana barely got by Kentucky in overtime. They didn't cover since he beat Miami of Ohio. Syracuse over Purdue. How about the miracle Syracuse pulled out of their arse? Northwestern loses at home to Southern Illinois. I'd fire Fitzgerald for losing that game. I've been hearing about how great a coach he is. Uh, 17 years in, in Evanston, NFL caliber. He's going to get an NFL job. He can't beat Southern Illinois at home. Can you tell I bet on Northwestern? Baylor beat Texas State. Kentucky a winner. Michigan destroyed UConn. Georgia killed South Carolina. Notre Dame won a game finally. UCLA survived against South Alabama. We'll do all that, you name it. Untouched toast. slightly conflicted is because I feel like I love so much on the board, but do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet or my best bet? We'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a PI down the field. The morning after only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. It is really all about winning, but at the end of the day, if anyone tells you it's not about winning money, they're lying to you. Why do we DFS? Why do we play in these leagues? Why do we pay so much attention? It's because we want to win and we want to win the money. If you have some wide receivers that might have two or three weeks of tough quarter matchups ahead of them, don't just get all bent out of shape about these guys. In fact, go find them, target them in other leagues, and trade for them. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, Scott Frost was a hero in Nebraska, there's no doubt. He goes to Central Florida, undefeated season in 2017, bowl game a year before. He walks on water, returns home. Result, 5-22 and 22 in one possession games. If they waited till October 2, they could have saved 7 to $9 million, depending on how they did it in terms of relieving him of his responsibilities. Too much to take, probably a booster, who knows. The end of the day, interim coach Joseph takes over the team. They couldn't wait those two or three weeks. And here's the thing, every coach now negotiates a significant buyout. That's the cost of doing business. The trade-off is some people think it's unfair at the back end, 
may be the only way to get the coach at the front end. Nebraska may be moving on to better things. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. Hey, my man. Remember how intense I was when I was in the league? Sure. But now, I'm retired. Got everything on chill mode. Chill mode, Mr. Garnett. <laughs> Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Big ticket hitting big parlays. Whose house is it? Big ticket's Whose house? Whose house is big it? Big ticket's house. Big ticket's house. Woo! Big ticket's house. It's my house! What? <laughs> So I was balling in the park yesterday, Carver High, and I hadn't uh, played ball in the park for a while. Uh, and it's just violence at the highest level. The brothers uh, aren't really interested in Cracker Pharrell showing up to play. But I did show up and say, uh, you know, I haven't seen you guys in a while. They're like, yeah, we didn't miss you. And I said, do you have the BetMGM app? Because, you know, you get a thousand dollar risk free bet if you use the bonus code coast to coast. Suddenly, all of the brothers were best friends with me, knowing that they had a free thousand dollar play that day. And instead of balling, they were all uploading the BetMGM app on their phones. And then I lost in the quarterfinals. And they blame me for lack of defense. Uh, so I got blamed. And then I got in my car and drove home. But I did help everybody get onto BetMGM, Carver High, which was really uh, the key to the day. And then everything went south from there for me uh, because I had the Ravens on the money line. I had the Browns minus six and a half, and I had the Rams minus 10. And you know how those three games went. I certainly do know how those three games went, Scotty. That's for sure. Uh, it was quite the pain day Sunday in the NFL. Very painful if you were holding quite a few tickets. Lots of big comebacks late in these games. Let's start the games in are Baltimore. Fixed. I think they're fixed. Let's, let's start I think the NFL Baltimore. is fixed. I've never Where seen that Ravens. before in 50 years of my life. Have you ever seen anything like yesterday? Uh, no, I have not, uh, considering the amount of huge leads in the fourth quarter, uh, that you thought were comfortable, were gone in an instant. Uh, you're probably right about that. All those were home we'll teams start... too. All of them were home All teams. teams. Start in Baltimore where the Ravens had a 35 to 14 lead going into the fourth quarter after a 79 yard touchdown run for Lamar Jackson, Scotty. Then the Dolphins went to work. Two have found, uh, found Kraft, Rivercraft. Hill had a 48-yarder. Hill had a 60-yarder. Tucker did kick a field goal to put them up three, but with under 15 seconds left to go, Tua finds Jalen Waddle for his sixth touchdown pass of the day on CBS. Tungle by Lohr. Blocked by Onstead. Two into the end zone. Caught for the touchdown! Caught for the touchdown! Waddle! taking the lead i mean you knew they were going in right like i never thought for one minute when they got inside the 10 that they weren't going in he completed every pass he threw i mean did you see how wide open hill was on that touchdown i mean christ yeah. what were the ravens even on the field when that occurred were they on the field actually or were they in a huddle at the sideline because i have never seen a team melt down worse than that team yesterday like, I thought the Rams game wasn't a meltdown. I just thought, there's no way they're catching us. We're up 30 to 10. We're not losing this game. We're going to play half-assed. I thought the Browns looked like you walked in on your wife sleeping with your best friend in the master bedroom when you came home uh, from work early that day. That's what that was. But the game that really got me was the Raven game. Uh, how in God's name did they lose that game? And they literally never tried once to stop the Dolphins in the fourth quarter. They quit. That team is not winning anything. They will not win the North. They will not win in the playoffs. And giving him that money is the kiss of death because he doesn't win big games. Are you kidding me? I watched that game yesterday. I wanted to puke. Uh, I still don't understand, like you said, the two long Tyree kill touchdown passes. I have no idea what the Where Ravens were they? doing on either of them. Uh, they just were absolutely miserable 
with defensively. Two of throws for 469 yards and six touchdowns in the game. Tua! So there you go, Scotty. Mike McDaniel uh, and the offense making things happen. For you the know what? I, I wanted to say one other thing oh. about yes. McDaniel. I swear to God, I was having Don Shula flashbacks when I saw him on the <laughs> sideline with those glasses on and uh, storming up and down the sideline with those old time gold rim glasses he was rocking. He looked like Don Shula when he was young coaching. I, honest to God, thought I was watching Don Shula when he was 30 years old. I'm telling you that I've said it at the beginning of the year in the off season in training camp, I told you, Vikings and Dolphins were my two teams that are gonna cause the most damage in the NFL this year. And I don't know, Jack, but I know one thing, the Dolphins are already there. Let's go to the next uh, huge comeback. So a lot happened in the final two minutes of the Jet Brown game, Scotty, in Cleveland. It started with Nick Chubb, who, if he goes down, the Browns run down the clock, Jets never see the ball again, and the game is over. Instead, he went in for his third touchdown of the game. On top of that, Cade York missed the extra point. So 30 to 17, under two minutes to go. Flacco finds Corey Davis with a 66-yard touchdown. The Jets recover the onside kick. They then go down the field where Flacco uh, finds rookie Garrett like Wilson for his second touchdown of the game on to CBS. This is what you're Two doing chances to get 10. For doing the Jets. This on purpose. Flacco over the middle. It's caught. Touchdown. Garrett Wilson. The Jets trying to pull a miracle comeback. 15 yard strike from Flacco. Trying to pull a miracle comeback. Uh, <laughs> honestly, dude. Seriously. Uh, you know, that was a done deal right there. Done deal. I mean, that was unbelievable. And Wilson played at Ohio State. They couldn't guard him. Uh, the Browns, uh, that was a choke. That was a choke. That was awful. You're up 30 to 17 with a minute 55 left and you lose at home. I almost went in my pants. I had Cleveland <laughs> minus six and a half. I was so livid. Honestly, at that point, I knew the Rams weren't going to cover. And at that point, they were up 28 to 3. And I went like this. Uh, so, no, when the game ended, the Jet game, I knew that the Rams wouldn't cover for me because of, of those two games I had just seen. So, sure enough, 25 minutes later, they're up 28 to 3. And I'm like, yeah. they're still going to not cover. And sure enough, they didn't. That was another one, Foldo, El Foldo. I have never had a worse day betting in my life in the NFL. I wanted to jump in the ocean with a big cinder block of cement and drown myself. I'm not even kidding. I was so, I, I, I didn't even talk. My wife said, we're getting Chinese. I went, err. Uh, third uh, big comeback of the afternoon. The Cardinals were down 20 to nothing in Vegas against the Raiders. 23 to 7 heading into the fourth quarter. Kyler Murray does the magic, Scotty. Gets him in there for two touchdowns, two two point conversions. They go to overtime. Byron Murphy returns the fumble to the house for the win on CBS. Second and 10, quick pass outside, and that is complete. That is Moreau, and Moreau fighting for yardage. The ball is loose again. Uh -oh. Picked up by That's the Cardinals. This is Byron Murphy to the end zone for game. the touchdown and the win. I, I, I mean, Kyler Murray's unbelievable. That's why they gave yeah. him all that money. He made the Raiders look ridiculous uh, trying to chase him around in the, yep. in the pocket. And then how about Crosby gets him for a sack, and he gets out of that uh, jam and breaks free and runs. He humiliated them on every play, the fourth and five from the five when he ran into the corner of the end zone. And then he gave the guy to Jimmy – the facial, he he handed him the ball as he went. And he goes, here, you take it, because I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a get all the glory over here. You take it. And, I mean, he was humiliating him. And then how about that pass? How about that pass to win it in that rope into the back of the end zone? That was crazy. Your heart.
hearts racing, the clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. Pregame, pregame. Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All that matters is getting first in these contests and uh, trying to not split that first place money with as many people as possible. So I've already had my, my brain working. Both across FanDuel, I'm going to have a lot of exposure. And if I'm not going to go with him in MVP, I'm not going to say I'm locking him in my flex plays, but it is going to be damn near close. I mean, I just think he's a fantastic play overall. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The, early, the top four seeds here in the Big Ten, they're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live, win. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live, overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. They scored seven points in a football game <laughs> and did not score a touchdown. Let's think about that. You're not good at math. I'll do the math for you. They're laying things off, but they're doing something wrong with this group or that group or whatever. I, I, Within one to two years, absolutely. And it could involve a referee of a major professional sport. There's no debate in my mind that that's possible. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. All right, Pharrell back on Coast to Coast. Adam Kaplan is our NFL insider. He's getting ready to go to the uh, Eagles game against the Vikings in Philadelphia. We'll get into that game. High winds in Philly this afternoon. I see reports at that stadium that there's gusting winds, and I wonder if that's going to affect the game. We'll get into that later, though. Uh, let's start with the suspension of Mr. Evans after the brawl with Lattimore spilled into chaos on Sunday in New Orleans at the Superdome, Adam. Yeah, so here's the thing. Now, look, it's not a surprise to anyone because you, as you being a hockey guy, remember that third man in role? Well, Mike Evans came off the bench, and when you do that, you come from the sidelines, it, it's not going to be good, and you go pushing people. And John Runyon, of all people, John Runyon, who's the rules officer, handed out that one-game suspension, by the way, without pay. And, and here's the thing. They play the Packers. This is their home opener this Sunday against Green Bay. And what they're going to do now without Evans is they'll go with a combination of, well, Leo Jones, if he could play, he, he looked good week one. I told you how well he looked in the in, uh, training camp. But Jones missed his past game. Chris Godwin missed his past game. So if those guys can't play, it'll be Russell Gage is making $8 million a year coming over from Atlanta. Rashad Perriman, who had some good catches in that game yesterday. Scotty, Scotty Miller, who's been there for a while. And Jalen Darden, who was a draft pick last year, uh, he, he also finished the game. So it, it's it's clearly going to be a problem. And as someone from the Bucks told me, one of the things coming into the season that they were concerned about is the 
loss of Rob Gronkowski, the star tight end, and Brady's guy, his security blanket at tight end, due to his retirement once again. So this is going to be a problem against the Packers, who have an excellent secondary. As you saw last night against Chicago, they completely shut them down against the pass, and uh, the rebounder from week one. So it's going to be a problem. This makes this game very even on Sunday at, at the at the Bucks in their home opener. Uh, but look, this is a problem. There, there's no getting around it. They do have a running game with Leonard Fournette, but it's going to be a problem. And, and, and you know, the other thing here is through the first two games for Brady, he's putting up historically low numbers for his first two games, averaging 201 yards uh, in passing per game and just one touchdown, which is unheard of for a guy who threw over 40 touchdowns last season. Well, do you think it's because of Todd Bowles? Uh, he wants to pound the ball and uh, throw less and rely on his defense, which has been incredible. And they've had all those injuries up front. No, you hit the ladder. It's being down two to three linemen, okay? They're down four linemen from last season. They're, they're down a minimum of two starters right now, probably more than more likely three. I think that's it, not having Gronkowski. As I mentioned earlier, their red zone offense has been poor. They have not – even when they get it down there, they're, they're bogging down. Now, again, they're not going to have Evans, who's money in the red zone, and obviously he's a good deep threat still at his age. He's terrific. So you saw Brashad Perriman, who, who's a deep threat, who, a, a former first-rounder for the Ravens who could run, but – it's going to be a problem, but you just said it, and this is the reason why they're two and zero. Not their offense; it's their defense, which has given up one touchdown in two games. They've been phenomenal. In fact, one person from the Bucks told me uh, when I was there that they think this defense is perhaps better than the one in twenty twenty when they won the Super Bowl. Well, uh, I thought it was ugly that game, and then late they finished them off and got all those uh, picks. Uh, Dean had a couple of picks, and it was all over. But the shouting, all right. The first game kicks off tonight in Orchard Park. It's the Bills and Titans. And then like a half hour later, they're going to start your game in Philadelphia. I don't like the timing of the two games. I don't mind two games. It should have been one game at 7, 15, 7, 30, and then a West Coast game. Why would they put both games in the East Coast up against each other? What were they thinking? And it's not in week one. We've seen them do the week one doubleheader on ESPN over the years, but this one is in week two. And it's it's always for TV. It, it, they think that this is going to work to me. And by the way, you've got two really good matchups. And some of these teams might be pushing for the Super Bowl. So, yeah, it, it surprised me. But let's go to the first one quickly here with the Titans. So the Titans, we know what's going to come here. It's going to be a lot of Derrick Henry tonight. Now, last week, only had 21 carries. A guy they're not going to have behind him is Dontrell Hilliard, who was terrific last week. See, what the, the Titans are trying to do, for L is they're trying to manufacture points in the pass game. They don't have a very good receiver core. They're not great at tight end. They need some explosives out of their backfield. And Dontrell Hilliard, who was terrific last year, scored two touchdowns last week. He's not going to play with his hamstring injury. So look for Traylon Burks, their first-round receiver. You might remember him a little bit in the, in the backfield at Arkansas. He had 39 carries, 8 yards per carry. 39 carries over his career, three, 8 yards per carry in college. Also scored a rushing touchdown. Look for him to get some carries tonight. But, in fact, some teams I talked to prior to last year's draft uh, thought that he had some Debo Samuel in him out of the backfield, so look for some of that. Also in defense, one of their best corners, uh, Christian Fulton, is not going to play with, with a hamstring injury. I know some people looking at this matchup tell me they think the Titans will go from more man coverage to zone coverage because they're not really deep in co at corner. That's a problem going against the great Josh Allen on the other side. And, by the way, for Josh Allen, doesn't sound good for Gabe Davis, I'm told. The, uh, the, they're – third-year receiver who's a starter now. Here's the problem and why I don't think he's going to play or most likely won't play. He got hurt for in Saturday's practice. That's their last of the week. It's not like he got it hurt a week ago. And they're not. I'm told they're not ruling him out, but I'm also told it's not a high ankle sprain, so that's a, that's a good thing to come out of this. They're going to see if he can get through pregame warm-ups, but it doesn't sound good. If he doesn't play, it's Jake Kumro probably would start. Isaiah McKenzie, Khalil Shakir, who's a rookie, is a fifth-rounder. They're not going to have Ed Oliver one of their starting D tackles, and Tim Settle, one of their key backup D tackles, probably not going to play with a calf strain. That does not sound good against the great Derrick Henry. And, the, the, boy, the, the, the Titans got to get Derrick Henry going. They know that, and I expect that to happen tonight. Do you really think that they can run the ball against the Buffalo Bills defense? I know it'll be hard. I know it's going to be hard, but here's the thing. Every time you think Derrick Henry can't do it, I'll never forget last year that, that – that game when the Titans were down 17 points against Seattle, it looked like they were finished. They kept running. Then Henry Henry went off during the second half in overtime. They pulled that game out. I never, ever discount Derrick Henry possibly getting the job done. It's going to be hard. And I would lean towards the Bills in this matchup. 
But the Titans, every time you think they're down, they can't do it. They still finished with the number one seed without Henry last season. That's true. All right, in the link, Philadelphia, a good one. This is the one I want to see. Uh, the Vikings and Eagles uh, both go into it 1-0. and uh, What do you got here? Yeah, so lots of subplots to this game. It's, what's interesting about this game is, and it's in Philly, as you say tonight, it's going to be in the 80s. Some win. It should, it should be a major factor. Kevin O'Connell comes in in his first row game as a head coach. Most people don't know this, but he had a Kirk Cousins one year in Washington with, when uh, O'Connell was the offensive coordinator, the interim offensive coordinator. So the two know each other. They look great in week one. Now, as one former NFL player told me, one concern he has for the Vikings this, in this game is playing at Lincoln Financial Field. Outdoors, it, you know, because you've been at games there, it gets unbelievably loud. They've got one of the youngest, uh, youngest offensive lines in the National Football League. You worry about communication, pre-snap penalties, false starts, stuff like that. That is going to be a challenge tonight. Watch for that. That, to me, for real, I had not thought of that until this player told me that. And then defensively for the Vikings, and you met this guy, Patrick Peterson. You and I saw him at the Super Bowl. He's right. in the twilight of his career. The one issue that the Vikings have is on defense at corner. They're very good up front. They're they're running a 34 front, which they haven't run in like 40 years. And the uh, the ironic thing for all in this game is both teams are running Vic Fangio's 34 front. They're both both coaches are disciples or, or or guys who like running that scheme. So look for that. And then the other thing is AJ Brown, who went off in week one. That's where I think the differences in this game is. And both teams run the ball really well. And I can tell you the Eagles run defense was terrible last week. But the thing is, in the end. The Lions could not stop the Eagles' run game and A.J. Brown, who was unbelievable in his debut, 10 for 155. Let me ask you, uh, off of uh, that game, are you still you still like the Eagles to win this game? I do. I think this is a tight one. I think the difference is the experience that the Eagles have on the coaching staff. And, again, this is O'Connell's first game outdoors, okay, outdoors. This is going to be tough for them. But the X factor for the Vikings is not just Dalvin Cook. It's, it's Je Justin Jefferson. Uh, who the Eagles passed on to draft Jalen Rager. Now Jalen Rager, ironically, is with the Vikings. Well, I mean, Jefferson could beat the Eagles by himself. I mean, no, he did no, the Packers no. in, in week one. I mean, that guy, I want to see somebody stop him before I start uh, figuring out who's going to win that game. No one's been able to guard him yet. I have to ask you about uh, Garoppolo. Yeah. Uh, they're better with Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, it's night and day. Oh, yeah. Not only that, I, I think they could go to the Super Bowl with him. Think about this, Pharrell. They went to two championship games and one Super Bowl with the guy. And you and I know this. They were an interception drop away from being in the Super Bowl again. So Ugh. the fact of the matter is he calms everything down. Hard. What they're going to do, folks, when you watch the 49ers offense, they're going to go back to being an old school, West Coast, old school West Coast offense. Lots of running, play action, roll Jimmy G out. It's good for Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle when he gets healthy. He'll settle things down. And this is good. This is not the... Trey Lance and throwing the ball downfield. It's a lot of intermediate pass a game concepts and run the football. And that's what it's going to be. And I, I agree with you. I actually so we lost uh, Adam there. Carver, hi, I want to ask you, uh, you know, and I was just about to say this to Adam, so I'm going to throw it right at you. We already talked about this uh, in a sense. How do the Ravens and Browns recover from those just – absolutely stunning blown games. I, I just don't, I, you never live it down is what I say. It's very hard to live it down. That's for sure. Now look at, you got to go to you, the next team that they play. Browns don't have a lot of time to think about it. Thursday night, Steelers right away. Big division game. Have to put it in the back burner. Ravens are going to New England to play the Patriots. So they don't have much to, to put in the rearview mirror either. Very tough when you blow those games. Extremely tough. But the Browns at least uh, don't have to think about it very long. I mean, I, I thought the Steelers' offense was so anemic yesterday. Oh. Uh, I couldn't believe they got us the ring the bell Friar move TD because uh, they never got inside that 30, but that time, one time the whole game. I know.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College National football today. Alabama and winning SEC champion. It's the island of misfit choice. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injury. This is a brutal rash of In injury. Game line, but you take all the points. Access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brentsy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J E T S. Just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In game live, all access only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar. You know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give him money. Smile. That was nice. You want to give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. prove how much better they are than Texas, this actually matters. Winning this game 65-0 matters. Because, see, they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52-10. to Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing, on average, eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kev, and we talked about that total mm-hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Kaplan, obviously, Carver High was uh, so ready to go to the length of the Eagles game. He just decided to turn off the segment midstream and just, you know, roll right out to the limo and get into the car to go down to, you know, South Philly to the game. He just completely was done with us. You could tell that. He's on the take for the Eagles. Jason Scott is our dear friend at the MGM in Vegas. He runs the uh, sports book activity. He's the VP of trading at BetMGM. Uh, I got to tell you, Jason, uh, you heard me talking about it. Uh, I can't even believe what I saw with my own eyes. Uh, 28 to 7 Baltimore at the half and, and you know, up 35-14 in the fourth and you lose. Uh, that's inexcusable to me. I don't know how you ever recover from it. And then uh, the Browns up you know, 30 to 17 with a minute 50 left and they lose. And then the Rams were up 30 to 10 and and they couldn't cover uh, 10. I mean, that is just unbelievable to me. Like, what was that like for the book? Look, it was like we had guardian angels on our back yesterday. I think I read uh, it was the first time since 2011, the the two New York teams, the Lions and the Jaguars have all won on the same day. So the results in terms of the, the comebacks, uh, Dolphins was our best result. The um, Ravens were pretty much our worst result all day other than Green Bay. Uh, New York Jets, obviously, were, you know, plus six and a half at the start for them to win. 
And then the other good result for us was the the Cardinals come back from 20 nil against the Raiders. So it was a it was a roundabout day, but the book was the winner out of it. So the explain the Baltimore Dolphin game, how that affected you. What was the money like on that game? It was one way. Uh, the, the, both the money line and the spread was all on the on the Ravens in play. We had a couple of people trying to buy money for large six figure amounts at a dollar five and a dollar seven when they got a big lead. Um, so yeah, it, it was pretty much the result from heaven for us. Killed a lot of parlays. I mean, it, I, I honestly, like, I, I wanted to stick a knife in my chest. I, I just, I, I couldn't. Have you ever in your life seen a day like that uh, with that many, uh, just not even normal comeback, outrageous, outrageous comebacks? Like, I have never seen in one day two games like that, let alone three, and there was really four with Arizona because the Falcons cover was just as crazy. It was almost the reverse of the Super Bowl. They were down yeah. – what was it? Twenty five. It was twenty eight to three in that game, and they yeah. and they and they blew it. This time they were down twenty eight three, and they came back and covered. And of course, I had the Rams in ten. Have you ever seen four games like that in the NFL ever in your life? I can't remember ever seeing that before on one day. No. Well, the, the, the second interesting point or surprising point is there were four dogs that came back. So usually when you see those late comebacks, it's a favourite, you know, so-called better team that have started slowly or might run over here. Here we've had four dogs that were all written off mid-game. Three of them have come back to win, the other one have come back to cover. So, you know, and the money for so in the Cardinals game, the, the uh, Raiders were three and a half to five and a half. It got to six at some point. There was no money for, for the Jets and there was no expectation for the Falcons either. So it's quite amazing that what happened was against all expectation as well as the fact that it happened. What was it like? I mean, I know you're busy at the book in the back counting money and such. Uh, what was it like in the sports book? Uh, was the language nice? Because I'll bet it was real nice outside in the sports book, everybody having their beers. What was the reaction like in the hizzy when, with the fans that were there packed? Well, it got pretty busy after it happened, Scott, because there was a lot of money to count, much more than we were expecting if it didn't happen. Those piles get pretty big. But uh, no, it was it was uh, it was pretty colourful. <laughs> I uh, I left the office early yesterday and went to the went and watched the second half of the Raiders game. I got there at half time, and it's fair to say the crowd there didn't take it very well. So you went you went over to Allegiant to watch the second half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I miss miss watching the Rams come back, but I watched the second half of that game because. Uh, we were having a good day by then, so they didn't need me in the office anymore. What about, uh, what was it like watching Kyler Murray do that in front of your very eyes? Well, that two-point play, is, it's a shame he only got two points for that. It deserved the full six, didn't it? But look, right. he's been heavily criticised, some of his play, whether it's sustainable as he comes down to the down to the wire. But I mean, Marquise Brown dropped that one in overtime that he shouldn't have dropped. I mean, they should have won straight off in, in the overtime. Uh, scored a touchdown straight away. So uh, good on the little guy. Um, let's hope we see more of it. So uh, what's the action like tonight for the double header? Yeah, two complete contrasts. I'd say the Philadelphia Vikings game is the best two-way action we've seen on any game this year. We're riding money bets at the plus two and a half, bets at the minus two and a half, money line both sides. The, the, the Sharps want to be on the unders in the total, uh, whereas the other game's one-way traffic. Uh, we can't we can't seem to find the, the Tennessee players mustn't have any parents that even want to have a bet this week. Um, we can't we can't write their name, so it's all it's all um, the Bills minus ten and a half or on money line. Do you think uh, just yourself that after what you saw yesterday uh, with those big double digit spreads that uh, in the NFL when everything comes down to the last minute and a half, whatever I, it's not even two minutes now it's not, now it's down to you know, in the last minute, a team will score seven touchdowns to win the game in the bet. So it's inexplicable. You can't even – I've never seen – I. you know what? Honestly, I've never seen it in any sport ever in the world except the NFL where this kind of shack happens. I've never seen it in any sport. You tell me what sport that happens in, and then I'll listen to you. Because in the NFL, it's every week. 
it's absolute chaos in the last minute and a half. I mean, how much is that? Top, upside down, games turned upside down. But how much of that's on the coaching? They get a lead and go to sleep and don't try and score and try and protect rather than keep playing how they got the lead. And that's how half these teams come back. And the officials seem the pass interference calls and the, the holding calls in the fourth quarter seem to over-index compared to the rest of the games. But um, I'm not being a conspiracy theorist, but it's just human nature. Um, so, yeah, look, it, it, it's great for betting turnover, though, because no matter how, how, how beaten you look, you're always a chance to come back. And we've got four examples of that yesterday. So I think it, it, it keeps interest. It's pretty hard to be taking big, big minuses right now, isn't it? So how do you feel about the Titans getting that 10 and a half tonight? Titans against the spread have been fantastic over the last two years. Um, we have saw that we saw the week two bounce with a couple of teams. They, they should be good enough to compete. The Bills are obviously setting themselves for, for the first game of the year on the Thursday nights. I'm not, I prefer to take the plus 10 and a half than give the 10 and a half. I don't think they'll beat the Bills, but I think they do have some chance of covering. So the props for tonight, all on Jefferson and Hertz and uh, Henry and, and Stephon Diggs. Is that where you're seeing most of the green? Yeah, Diggs, Diggs and Allen's probably the only other one you missed. Uh, we, we, what we do know with our customers, they want to bet on the high-profile players and 90% of the time on, the, on these props, they want to be on the overs. So, so they're the numbers we've seen. 6-3 in any game is a perfect score for the book right now. So what's this guy? Uh, do you know this story about the guy that got paid out big time on the Sunday night game? Uh, with the Packers, what was that all about? Yeah, so we had a, we had a customer who had five hundred on a on a same game parlay to win to win win quarter of a million dollars. And I mean, any man that's willing to take Justin Fields to score the first touchdown and then multiply it through about five other options deserves his money. Wow, that's crazy. Is that what he hit it on? Yeah, yeah. But there's a couple of Aaron Jones props. Uh, some Rogers props, Justin Fields to score the first touchdown on the Packers to win minus 10 and a half. So that's the same game parlay product and good on him. And that's why it's a great product. You can you can win big prize. You can win a lot of money for a little outlay. So what's the deal? Uh, are more people betting on these props now than on the games? Yeah, what well, our props business are probably double what they were last year. I think people are becoming more and more aware of it. As I said, that for, certainly for your smaller punter, you can go to the game and spend twenty dollars or thirty dollars to try and win four hundred with a some sort of associated parlay, over runders, anytime touchdown, whatever. It's certainly gaining traction, and, and people are liking them. When did that become huge? Like, what year did that become enormous? I think in Europe, certainly for soccer, it probably became big two or three years ago because. Let's face it, you need something to keep yourself interested in watching a 1-0 soccer game or one all or whatever. So they, they bet on number of passes, number of corners are all part of that. And I think it started to take off the same game parlay when Fangio bought it in two seasons ago, grew a bit last year. It's now, you know, it's, it's brought it into basketball, baseball, hockey will be here this year. So so it's taking off. The last 12 months has been exponential growth. That's crazy. Uh, so what are the odds like now? How much have things changed with Jimmy G uh, running the Niners? Yeah, well, well, the, the irony is that they, there has been no change at all. That'd be, the, that'd be the first time ever, wouldn't it, that a quarterback's gone out or gone down and the, the second string comes in and there's no change. I think they might have shortened up a role yesterday on the back of their good win, but it's certainly in the terms of the way we're pricing it. Uh, we've got equally as much faith in Jimmy G. Personally, I've got more faith in Jimmy G than I did Trey Lance. So. Me too. Me too. Yeah. What about uh, Georgia, Bama, and Ohio State? The only teams with less than uh, plus 1,000 odds to win the national championship. Who are people betting on more? Uh, Bama, but it's, look, to be honest, all three of them is not a great deal of interest. All three are still winners for us. We're riding bets at 1,000 to 1 and 500 to 1. A lot of other schools, it's people don't seem to want to tie their money up at that short odds for so long. What about uh, the Washington win and the Oregon win and the LSU win? In particular, that one. I hit that bet, the LSU bet, plus three. I had a great Saturday in college football. I made a ton of money. Uh, and I I've been killing it in college football. It's the pros that are, are raking me. What did that LSU do? Did everybody bet on Mississippi State? Yeah, so basically our day was we, we started and we I think we were three million down after Georgia and uh, Nebraska won. We fought back in the middle of the day and then USC 
took it all away late. So yeah, uh, the Mississippi State, the LSU game was fantastic for us and was our best best college result of the day. Yeah, me too. And the late one that uh, got me over the top was Utah laying 21 against San Diego State and they beat them 35-7 and I was loving life. And then Sunday came around and I got smacked in the face with a brick from three feet away. Uh, Judge is right there now at 59. You know he's going to go over. Yeah, it looks like he is, and it's been a hell of a season. The, the um, MVP race is pretty much over. We did run a few props earlier on the year to over 61. We didn't get a huge bit of money, but I'll tell you where we are going to lose proper money on the pool halls. Uh, for him to get to 700, we, uh, we, ran, we ran markets on that, and we were inundated. So uh, this rich vein of forming in it hasn't helped us one little bit. What about the Canelo fight? Uh, what did that do for you? Now, if the favourite wins on points, as a rule, the book's good. So there are two types of betters in the box, and they usually want to sit back the favourites or a knockout, or they want to be on the, on the dog. Uh, favourites winning on points is always good for us, and this was no exception. The activity on that fight was spectacular, though. Uh, other than the Wilder Fury fights, that would be, the be our biggest uh, handle for the last three years on boxing. Not, not for long. When Spence and uh, Crawford fight, it's going to double it. Yeah, no, I agree entirely. Who do you like? I like Crawford. And I've seen them yeah. both fight 15 times live, so Mavi has been there with me to see Spence fight in Dallas. Love you, Jason. See you next week, buddy. Thanks. Make some money. Thanks, Great time to get in on Chargers futures, just as an example, because we are going to see some huge, huge swings in those markets, uh, like way bigger than I think we've ever seen in the past. You look at lower salary running backs on FanDuel, they tend to pay off even when they're chalky. Uh, their hit rate is very good. If you look at value, they're good, but also just like raw points, lower salary backs the public has confidence in tend to do very well. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. Alabama in winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit to it. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash you can take the money line and the sports book if you shop around you can get it at 133 but um that's my best bet on the night joe so that's the one i'm going big in game go. live prime time I'm going a bit nostalgic i'm going with an international jason day and sergio garcia but boy you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The level of suckness goes here, Scott, on the suckness scale. Um, Hawaii is not going to suck as bad as Duquesne is. I love my Canes, and they hate me in Tallahassee, obviously. But I wanted to say that last night was the first time in 20 years that I bet on Florida State in a football game. I won't even let my kid go look at the school. In-game live all access, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. A Rod, Clemens, Pettit, Bonds, McGuire, Sosa. Get ready, because that soup is served ice cold. From a betting perspective for the 2022 NFL season, if I'm betting on the 49ers in the futures market, I want Jimmy G on this roster because that instantly becomes one of the best backups he's taken to the Niners to the Super Bowl. Pharrell, coast to coast. 
only on SportsGrid. So I bet on the Guardians today, uh, Carver High, and they're up 7-4 in the bottom of the eighth uh, at home against the Twins in the fifth game of that series. That'll wrap up with this game here in a little bit. But I I do like this other game that we're about to talk about in the afternoon in Anaheim. I actually, uh, I have a piece on this one too. Uh, Actually, 8-4 now. The Guardians lead the Twins in in that game where they are essentially, Scotty, uh, burying the twins uh from the al central uh if they weren't buried before this weekend losing four out of five to the guardians that will sh- certainly do it mariners and the angels another wraparound series in anaheim scotty they're starting in about 10 minutes gilbert grape is on the mound for seattle today suarez goes for anaheim minus 130 for seattle seven and a half the total at the top of the hour yeah i like the under here both of these guys are tough and I'm betting on uh, Seattle here. I got a nice piece on Seattle going at minus a buck 35. I like them to win this game against uh, Suarez and the Angels. I like the Mariners. Uh, They're a playoff team. They mean business. They are. Uh, they are in the third wild card spot right now in the American League. They have hit the 80 win mark. Uh, we just need five or six more, I believe, Sky, to get us over that uh, total there. That's a uh, done deal. The, uh, Yes, I know, but I like to wait until it's actually there. Listen, bro, they got 20 games left, and they need five wins. I know. we got two and a half weeks to go here. I like to see it done. I want it done, though, before I celebrate. That's it. (laughs) All right, we'll come back. I've got the rest of the NFL we have to get through. A lot (laughs) from yesterday. There was more pain than what we just talked about. We got a lot of college later. We also, in the last hour, will get to the baseball, too. Uh, The rest of it, besides just the Guardians beating up on the Twins all weekend, Scotty. So, Saturday, I was 43-25 and in college football spread, 63%. I can't hit a pro game to save my ass, but college, it's been three weeks in a row making tons of money. I had a good Saturday, too. Saturday was good for college. 